in the late summer of 1798, 22 years after the Declaration of Independence was signed, the United States of America had its first bank robbery. Around $5 million of today's money, 162000 back then, was stolen from a bank. They robbed it. They robbed the bank. That's what we're talking about today. This is Last from the Past. All right, thank you very much for joining us. Today's episode is about the first U.S. bank robbery. I put it out there on Twitter. I put a poll, Jay, because I had the next three lined up. Which ones do you guys want to hear first? I, there was no doubt first U.S. bank robbery wasn't winning the poll because everyone loves a good bank robbery. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm excited. It's a first bank robbery. Yeah. That's a scary concept in my head. Why? Well, a, I feel like, I mean, when were when were banks invented? Well, since the dawn of civilization, I think like the Romans had banks right. and stuff. First U.S. bank robbery. First U.S. bank robbery. Okay, that makes more sense to me. Yes, the country's only twenty years old. There's a whole thing about James Madison versus Thomas Jefferson and and how banks should be because Thomas Jefferson hated a centralized bank. Sure, Matt Madison. I was like, no, you need one. It's actually really interesting. What they did was they formed, this is off the top of my head, so it's not 100%. They formed the centralized bank when they became a country, and they immediately had, they had to establish a debt um, so because because they wanted other countries to trade with them. So they immediately took all of the, the, the states that were part of this confederacy, you know what I mean? They were part of a union, and they every state went in debt to the centralized bank right away that gave the centralized bank power over the states and it made other countries willing like okay well you're in debt to yourself so that's not that big of a problem for us because you wouldn't want to be the first country to put the u.s in debt you'd think you'd never get your money back right that was madison's whole thing thomas jefferson hated it but But yes banks in america is interesting shit yeah and then there's robberies so uh I More found nice I don't know where I found this out, but it's kind of interesting story. Kind of interesting. Bank robbery, Philadelphia, obviously. I mean, nothing was happening anywhere else. The article I found this on, it's written in a little little odd way, but I'm just gonna go ahead and read it, okay? Sure. You ready to get started? If you're a new listener to Last from the Past, I tell Jake a history story and then we talk about it. Simple yeah. as that. Bingo. I'm All right. the listener. It, what was that? I'm the listener. It was late summer, nine, 17, I do that twice now, 1798, and again, the deadly yellow fever was raging in Philadelphia. Many oh, yeah. abandoned the city. Others were forced to stay. About 1,300 would die in a swift but horrible death. Pretty good opening paragraph, huh? Yeah. Didn't, didn't see that being the lead, but I like it. How many Just, died? What was that number? 1,300. 1,300. Okay. Sure. Of course. I mean, the yellow fever came through again, so. Yeah. Shrug. Time, time to die. One of those lucky enough to escape the city was blacksmith Patrick Lyon. This is our main character now, so you're going to want to hone in on Patrick Lyon. He was a blacksmith in Philadelphia. He, he and his 19-year-old apprentice, they booked passage aboard a small sailing vessel to Cape Henlopen. And by the time they disembarked in Delaware, his 19-year-old apprentice was sick. He tried to get him help, but the apprentice died in two days. Yellow fever? Yeah. Fell ill. Just, yeah, fever. Other. Got him. Okay. So what, once... What are they, floating the river from, Pen- from Philly to Delaware? I guess so, yeah. It's south a little, right? Okay. Maybe west, I think. I'm not sure. Um, so they get in Delaware, they get in Delaware and everyone's talking about the plague, the plague, the plague, the plague. It's so terrible. You hear about Philadelphia, they're all dying. They got plague there. 
And then eventually word seeps through that there was an amazing bank burglary in the Quaker City. That's the name of the city? That's what it says. I think that might be a nickname for Philadelphia. I think that's code, yeah. yeah. I don't think Quaker, Quaker City was a thing. Okay. An enormous sum of 1,682,881... 1, how do you read numbers? I never know. $162,821, which in today's money is around $5 million. So that's a pretty big heist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It had been taken from the vaults of the Bank of Pennsylvania at Carpenter's Hall during the night of Saturday, August 31st, or the morning of Sunday, September 1st. You think there's any credence to what you got to rob a bank on the turning of the month? Or does it just happen to be that day? Maybe. Maybe there's something to do with people putting in their money at the end of the month or something like that. I have no idea. Or like staff holdover. I don't know. All right. So anyway, Pat Pat Lyon, our blacksmith that got away, he was avoiding the plague. He was enormously interested in the newspaper accounts of the robbery because the last job he completed before fleeing the city was to change the fittings and locks on two iron vault doors for the Bank of Pennsylvania. So he's saying, whoa, I just worked on that vault. Got yeah. robbed. What happened? Now, the the people that were investigating the robbery, they said it was obviously an inside job because there was no sign of forced entry into the building or the vault. Somebody so, knows something. So Lyon, he immediately suspected Carpenter Samuel Robinson, who was hired by the bank to oversee its move into Carpenter's Hall. He also suspected the stranger that Robinson had brought with him to Lyon's shop as he walked, worked on the doors. This is where I had to take my first pause while reading the story the first time, Jake. Okay, pause. So this says that Samuel Robinson was hired by the bank to oversee the move because the bank moved in the Carpenter's Hall and they had to change the locks. Like, right. How were jobs like that handed down in 1790? Just, oh, I'm an overseer? Like, I'll just watch for you? Like, I understand blacksmith... People that had trades. Like who, why does Sammy, how does Sammy Robbins, he just had to be a friend? Like, can you go check this out for me? I don't know. Maybe he owned like the blacksmith shop and he had blacksmiths that worked for him. Because he's the locks guy, right? He's overwatching the locks or the move or So yeah, everything? Patrick Lyon is the blacksmith guy. Right. And, and he's, he's changing the locks and Sammy Robinson is just overseeing the whole process to make sure nothing shady happens. Right. So maybe Patrick Lyon like works, worked for that guy. Like maybe the blacksmith Ma shop. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's a weird job. Okay. So Lyon soon discovered that he was a prime suspect. You think dude, you're the, you sure. were the locksmith who worked on the locks. Yeah. You fled too, technically. Yeah. Everything's looking sketchy for our guy, Pat Lyons. Right. In fact, Lawmen were combing the woods for the missing red-haired blacksmith, so Lyon immediately headed back to Philadelphia to clear his name and pass on the suspicions about Robinson and the stranger. So What a nut. No way do I go back. What an idiot, right? In those times? Like, there's, there's no justice. Yeah. Uh, like, he, he, uh, uh, no, he handed himself you in, and he it, said, so. actually, I think it was these two guys. Good for him, man. But his story was not believed, and he would spend three harsh months in prison. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what'd you think was going to happen? That's an <laughs> idiot move. <laughs> Too noble. Yeah. Um, the bank officials were certain the man who changed the locks made an extra key, and that's how it got robbed. Because, right. yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you be certain of that? No brainer. Yeah. It's not looking good for our guy, Pat. <laughs> Who I don't even know if I'm on his side, so I don't know why I'm calling him my guy. Okay. Because I think he seems pretty guilty, too. You're not picking sides, yeah. Yeah. So this is where the guy who wrote, writes this article uh, just has no, like, theater to his writing. This is the next okay. part. In the end, the affair would take on the flavor of a farce, the bank would get its monies back, and an and innocent victim, Pat Lyon, would regain his good name. Is that it? No, there's a the lot money. more oh, to the story. Thank God. They just decided whoever wrote this article decided to put the ending right in the middle. That's a little precursor. They're, when they wrote this, they wanted you to think that 
Pat Lyons did it or was a suspect. Mm-hmm. And then they wanted to clear the air, but they wanted you to... N- yeah, I okay. get it. All right, so the culprit turned out to be the stranger that came with Robinson to the to Lynn's shop. It was that stranger. It wasn't Robinson, the overseer. It was the stranger who he brought with him. So, I mean, that means it was Robinson to me, but I don't get that. Right. This guy's name is Isaac Davis. He's a member of the Carpenter's Company. Davis and a partner, and Davis's partner also died of yellow fever within days of the robbery. They were the only conspirators, and the inside man was bank porter Thomas Cunningham, who was asleep in Carpenter's Hall the night of the robbery. Still sounds super fishy to me. You got apprentices and dying after. Pat Lyons, 19-year-old apprentice, died after. Cunning, uh, Isaac Davis's his co-conspirator died the day after, and the inside man was a guy who was asleep. How'd they know he was going to be asleep? And I mean, yellow fever back in those times. Like, I doubt you're doing autopsies and stuff. Like, you're probably like that body's contaminated. So what if he he robbed the bank with that other guy, and then he just killed him and was like, oh, yellow fever got him. You couldn't risk a deep sleep when the yellow fever was sleeping through. Uh, okay. Like, sometimes my Nana, when she was in her late 90s, she'd fall asleep, and it'd just be like, oh, my God, did Nana just die? Like, this is terrible. She looks... Right. Like, you know, she was really old, deep sleep. If, if you have a fever, you don't want to go to sleep. If you Like, if you're sweating every outside. day, You every don't want to take a nap in the sun when yellow fever comes through, because they'll just be like, yep, yeah. here's your dad. You're That's dead. That's true. Am I just sweaty, or am I about to die? <laughs> That would be tough for me. I'm a yeah. habitual sweater. Okay. So the pair had apparently pulled off the perfect heist. Then, in a move that will live in the annals of stupidity, Isaac Davis began depositing the missing money in the very bank he had just robbed it from. Mm. You always return to the scene of the crime, Jim. Do, how could you be that dumb? $5 million, you go rob Bank of America on 1st Street in your town, you get $5 million, no one knows it, the next day, you hey, can I deposit a million dollars with you guys? Where'd you get the money? That's what they said. They said, confronted with questions about his sudden wealth, Isaac Davis gave a full confession. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Is this the dumbest, worst bank robber ever? What? It says he gave a full confession, made a deal to return all the money, and the governor of Pennsylvania promised a pardon in return for full disclosure and full restitution, and he never served a day in prison. Okay. Then I'm I'm okay with it. How does he not serve a day in prison? It's the first U.S. bank robbery, $5 million of today's money, and there's no precedent sent. The precedent sent is we'll put another guy in jail for three months and the guy who actually did it, just he's good to go. It's buyer's remorse, man. Hey, guys, I thought this $5 million was going to be really cool, but now it's just burning a hole in my pocket. I'm not smart enough to figure out how to launder this or use it or this not use it. This was my bad. It's, it's really weighing me down. So you just take it back, please. Money's not everything. I'll so you, just I'll give me a full exactly pardon. How it happened, who did what, yeah. and then, you know, go on. I just really life. don't want to go to jail. So here's the thing. So he comes in. Hey, can I deposit this? No, we just lost a ton of money. How come you just found a ton of money? Okay, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> Great but, question. It was but, me. So, and that had to be in his head a little bit. Like he was get he was pulling one last bluff on them. Like if I can deposit the money in their own bank, like then it's my money basically. So, what was his negotiating tactic though? Because like you're right. What if they just said, uh, "Yeah, you're gonna give all the money and you're gonna go to jail for the rest of your life. You can't do that." I'm guessing he must have had the money like hidden in different places or something. And he was like, "I had." Hey guys, I kind of screwed up. Money, I I hid the money all over. I got scared. I don't want it anymore. I will I will return every dollar. 
I'll tell you how I did it. Just, uh, yeah, just no jail, please. Yeah, I, I don't know. And here's what I just, like, thought about in my brain. Nowadays, money is rolled up in those little slips that, like, you know, stacks of 20 for, like, 200, whatever the order is. So you sure. And a machine does that. Collects it, wraps it, stacks it, wraps it. We've all seen Breaking Bad. Right. And uh, back then... I feel like it had to be handwritten and probably like tied with a little rope or something to be like mm. kept proper. So do you think know. he's taking this stacks of money going back to the bank and the teller's like, yo, that's my knot. Like I tied. That's how I tie knots. Oh. That's my string. Okay. I see where you're going. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm not formally trained on how the 1700 banks used to stack their money. But, but there's probably, there's a little of that somewhere. Yeah. Cause I mean, think about, you just said like, looks you like just, that looks a lot like the money I put back there two days ago. You just said it was obvious. Cause like nowadays they can like track the codes on the bills and all of that. Like back in the day, I'm sure that wasn't as easy as it is nowadays. So, I mean, if he deposited like 20 bucks, you do you do that modern day? They're like, oh, that's one of the missing twenties. Like, who is that guy? Blah blah blah. Like, if he just returned a, just one twenty, hey, I found it on the street. Like, I they still don't know it's him. No. Yeah, he's pretty dumb. Isaac Davis, what a dumb idiot. Sounded like he didn't want to do it. See, I'm now I'm thinking he got roped in with the guy who died of yellow fever. That guy actually died. And then this other guy is like, no, now I've got $5 million on my hands. I, I, I think there's something shady. I'll get to the, the rest of the story before I tell my okay. theory. But, yeah, okay. I think Isaac Davis was a patsy who never intended to be the mastermind of this heist but just, like, got stuck with it. He was like, fuck this. Right. Doesn't sound like it. So even after the confession, the bank and law officers stubbornly insisted that Lyons was involved in making a false key to the vault, and he would languish for several more weeks in prison until charges were dismissed. So this dude walked back to Philadelphia with the whole, I'm innocent, I'm innocent, only to have, like, no one believe him? Because why would they? Right. It's 200 years later, and I don't even believe him. See, that's why, and I, I was going to say this when we started talking about Pat Lyons returning. Like, so I get it. You want to be noble, and, like, you, you hear your names getting mixed up in a bank robbery, and you want to be like, hey, I did not do that. I'd, I'd like my name cleared. Yeah, but, okay, still late 1700s. I can only imagine what prison's like back then. There's a description it, coming up. would be awful. But, um, like... Maybe wait a couple weeks so this guy does return the money and your name is cleared. Yeah. And, like, give it a couple weeks to settle down and maybe they figure it out without you going up to the courthouse and saying, I'm innocent. But, okay, put me in jail for a month. Couple months. Yeah, bad times. Uh, so less than a year after his release, Patrick Lyon wrote a book about the about the affair. Now I'm gonna need your uh, so full. It was just, uh, now that? he wasn't on it. This was just a money grab. Listen to the name of his wow. book, Jake. This is gonna okay. knock your socks off. Okay. The book was entitled "Narrative of Patrick Lyon, Who Suffered Three Months Severe Imprisonment." Imprisonment. Ah, oh, fuck! I let me do it again. Narrative of Patrick Lyon, Who Suffered Three Months Severe Imprisonment in Philadelphia Gaul on merely a vague suspicion of being concerned in a robbery of the Bank of Pennsylvania with his remarks thereon. Say that again. That's the name of the book. Okay. That's the title? The, the book is, that's the title of the book. The title is Narrative of Patrick Lyon, who suffered three months severe imprisonment in Philadelphia Gaul on merely a vague suspicion of of being concerned in a robbery of the Bank of Pennsylvania with his remarks thereon. Yeah, catchy. <laughs> <laughs> like, this book is is forever known as, give me that Patrick Lyon book. It's a young Drake. 
hey, Patrick Lyons, one of the first guys to try to like capitalize on something like this? Because this must have been huge news. First bank robbery. He yeah. goes to jail. So now he's the innocent guy that goes to jail. And like, is he the first guy that like morning talk show, like people wanted to hear his story? Like, Maybe. oh, this you're you're just kind of an average guy that got caught up in it, Patrick. Tell us your story. There's books about um, people that were captured by Native Americans written back then that like I know one was a bestseller, like this girl that got caught by Native Americans and like lived with them for a couple years and shit. I don't know if that mm. predates that, but that is also like a big right story. Oh, that's the gossip. You hear this like gossip? A kidnapping but, type. I mean, anyone who was with interested the enemy. in what happened to Patrick Lyons is instantly uninterested when they read the title of the book. Oh, disagree. You want to read a sentence from a book that's titled that? I, I couldn't tell you two words from the title. <laughs> Outside of his names, I couldn't tell you any words in the title. <laughs> All right. Well, by turning author, he was paving the way for a major lawsuit against the bank and law officials. Basically, he wrote okay. down his case. Everyone knew about it. Nice, yeah, okay. The so most, maybe he is on, in on it. Yeah, the most renowned lawyers of the early 19th century Philadelphia would clash during Lyon's civil case in 1805, and a jury would return with a verdict awarding 12 grand to the blacksmith for false imprisonment. It's around 300 grand now. Couple months in prison, yeah. Totally worth it. Yeah. So now let's we get into a little background about Lyon, okay? This is what the writer does. Now let's do some. He was born and raised in London, and he started his mechanical studies at 11. He, was Im- he immigrated to America at 25 to make his fortune, although relatives were against it. I got dude, life back then, I can't even figure it out. He writes that his first American employer cheated him of wages. Eventually, his skill as a locksmith, blacksmith, blacksmith and clever mechanic earned him a good reputation and a decent living his work impressed many especially his creation of an excellent fire engine do you know what that means he created the fire engine is that what you're trying to tell me he right created now? an excellent fire engine like i that- i don't even know what i'm gonna google 1798 fire engine like, maybe was he the guy? No, because cars weren't invented until, like, the 1900s, right? Yeah, there's there's no cars here. Fire engine. That's a tough one. <laughs> like a re- I think it's okay. So I think it's just uh, horse and buggy. Oh. He's a blacksmith, right? Oh, okay, yeah. So he basically, yeah. put, like, it's like a coal-powered horse buggy. It's like a horse and buggy, but you take out the horse and you put like a coal steam like a train. But even so, it's like a train car. Yeah, I don't know. Or it's just like a water on wheels. I have no idea what a 1780s fire engine is. But Patrick Lyons made an excellent one. Made a great one. Got him a lot of thing. Praise. But yeah, so we've got a little chip on his shoulder from the wages he lost out on from his original employer or whatever. Okay. Yeah. At the time of his arrest, Lyon had his own shop, extensive tools, and 1400 in the Bank of North America, a sum that officials found suspicious. 1400 Yeah, I mean, that's in my head I picture like you do the translation like, "Oh, 300k um was 10,000 bucks or whatever it was. But, like, wasn't everyone poor? You were either poor or rich. There was no middle class, right? I don't... Yeah, the working class? I mean, he was, like, did have his own locksmith shop. But I don't know, like, what would he spend money on? Like, he's not going on vacations to Bermuda. Like, what's right. What are you saving money for? He didn't have any kids. But that's the thing. I think it's, like, in that lifetime, it was, like... Uh, oh, you can have chicken with every dinner. Am I wrong? I don't know, but no, I think you're right. Like so, because at the same time, like, what was he saving for? That means he what had would around you save thirty, for? around like forty to fifty k in the bank. Is that what that is equivalent to? And you're right. Why are you saving that money? What's right. your end goal? Because you're still working every day as a blacksmith. So what's the money you're saving for? Unless he planned on having kids down the down the line. 
I don't know. I I think yeah. I think suspicious is the right word. I think if you had money, you kind of spent it, unless you had gobbles and gobbles of money. Yeah. Because you're right. You weren't saving for retirement or your yacht. You were hoping to eat and survive the yellow fever. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take my 40 grand and I'll just move somewhere where there isn't yellow fever sweeping through constantly. Maybe. Lynn said he was contacted by Robinson to change locks and fittings on two iron doors, which were brought to his shop. He claims he told Robinson and several others that the doors were not proper for a bank and the locks were insecure, but there was haste to have the work done. So the, that makes him sound innocent in his brain. That makes him sound guilty. So, dude, you're admitting that you knew the locks were faulty and all that, and you were the one working on them. Sounds like a lot of it sounds a lot like a guy who wants to say, I told you they were faulty. And he's also right. that broke in. Like maybe he tried to upsell them on like a super lock and they were like, No, we don't need the super lock. And he's like, Okay, you're gonna get robbed. You're gonna get robbed. Uh nobody's ever robbed a bank in the US, dude. Okay. <laughs> um Robinson visited Lynn's shop with a stranger. So this is like weird. Like how is Robinson not in jail? Because he brought who this article is referring to as a stranger to right. oversee the bank of Pennsylvania's locks being changed. Right. Like this guy, Shane Robinson. No, not Shane Robinson. This guy, no. Robinson's only job was to oversee the changing of the locks. Right. And he brought a stranger to, to watch with him, who then right. went to rob a bank. So how is Robinson not in jail? Right. Even even if you weren't affiliated, you had one job. Big job. Yeah. Don't bring a stranger to check out the lock to the vault. Put him in jail for negligence. And what you did was you brought a stranger who ended up robbing the bank. You know, remember, remember that stranger you brought to oversee the, the bank vault lock job? Yeah, you, you, you said don't worry about that guy because <laughs> he won't he won't rob the bank. Guess what he did? Rob that bank. Um, and then well, didn't let's it, see. Didn't Robinson had the money too, right? Or no? No, no, no. Uh, Isaac Davis had the money. Was Isaac Davis the stranger? Yeah, Isaac Davis is a stranger. Okay. Um, okay. And Patrick Lyons remembered that Davis spent a good deal of time examining the doors, keyholes, and locks. Yeah, because he was about to rob you. Not We're rob shocked. you. Yeah. And then this is what, this is some all, all from uh, his book with the terrible title. Uh, Patrick Lyons says that he encountered the two men drinking near Market Street Wharf and both seemed uneasy and disturbed by his, his appearance. Lyon remarked to his apprentice, I don't think they're after any good. It's like, mm. okay, you, mm. you you, really had an eye for it. Good fodder, Patty. Uh, when he learned of the robbery, he immediately focused on the carpenter and the stranger, but bank and law enforcement officials were focusing on Lyon. High Constable John Haynes was eager to pin the rap on Lyon and collect the $2,000 reward. Mm. After sailing as far as Wilmington, Lyon walked to Pennsylvania, and he said, I have come 150 miles to surrender myself. What a, okay, dummy. We weren't going to go 150 miles to find you. Yeah. Kind of just wish you didn't come back. <laughs> you um, came back to tell us you're innocent? Get out of here, dude. So the chief bank cashier and the bank president questioned Lyons, and they later said, his story of leaving for Delaware two days before the robbery seemed too detailed and practiced. And when the suspect said he felt faint and asked for water, they were sure he was guilty. So you know what? Love that. Patrick Lyons is guilty, man. He, he was behind all of this. Is this your belief? Or you're just speaking as the courtroom? Or what are you? This is you my right personal belief. 200 years, maybe whatever we are after the fact. Think about it, man. They were right. He goes, this is his grand scheme. He invented the fire engine or whatever, made an excellent one. He's smart, Jake. Sure. Guy comes to his shop, fix the locks. They go, oh, this would be easy. Okay, here's what we're going to do. You rob it. I'm going to leave town. They won't suspect you at all, stranger. The stranger was just a guy they called in off the street. 
Right. Like Robinson actually did come alone. There was a guy, just like a drunk guy banging around. They're like, come in here. What's your name? Isaac? Okay. Well, here's what we need you to do. You're going to go rob Isaac this. Was, it's gonna Isaac's be... the original fall guy. Yeah, yeah, the original fall guy. Okay. Ru- Jack Ruby. And then he and then he leaves town. His apprentice, he doesn't want to share it with him or um, have his apprentice around, like one less guy that knows it, right? So he kills his right. apprentice. Isaac Davis kills his cons- co-conspirator. They blame it on yellow fever. That's two less people that knew about the plan out. Robinson knows about the plan, but he's completely innocent because someone higher up at the bank likes him. He got the job of just overseeing. He was already in the good graces. So really Davis and whatever. His grand plan was Davis just hangs on to the money, doesn't do anything stupid. Patrick Lyons comes back, claims he's innocent, blames it on someone else. He, He blames it on Isaac Davis, right? But Isaac Davis has the money hid. They arrest Isaac Davis. They can't find the money. Patty Lyons goes, finds the money. He's the only one still alive, not a suspect, and he has all the money that Isaac Davis hid. Isaac Davis is in jail. Authorities can't find the figures. Shane Robinson, good graces. Other two guys, dead. Yeah, I think you missed a couple beats there. Maybe, because I was just throwing I think off the top did. of my head. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean... A, a, because I can write a story like that too. Where's is there another step to the actual story? Let's or see. where we left. Because right now I just have a thirsty Patrick Lyons in the courtroom. Okay, I, here here's the rest of it. Lyon writes, "I was found in the hands of those who are not the most intelligent of mankind. A magistrate committed the blacksmith to the Walnut Street Prison under an impossible high bail of one hundred and fifty grand." Lion knew yellow fever was raging inside the stone walls of lockup and feared for his life. He did not expect to come out alive, and it, and it appears that he did survive a bout of the fever. Lion described the prison as cold, damp, unwholesome, and solitary. Yeah, sounds like prison. His cell was only 12 feet by 4 feet. That's tiny, man. It's narrow. 4 feet by 12 feet? like a hallway it's like a basketball hoop laid down and you can touch both walls yeah i'm I'm looking at a little hallway in my apartment right now i've got it lined up pretty good that's tiny he says he says i read until i was tired and walked until i was weary i don't know how you could fucking walk until you're weary in a 12 by 4 oh yeah you think you can yeah just back. It's like four steps turn, four steps turn. Yeah, you just gotta practice. You gotta make sure you're turning the other way so you don't bang up your hips or your knees. You know, you, you know what those steps are? They're like little mouse steps, like just your toe in front of your toe, and then in front of your toe, in front of your toe. Oh yeah, that would probably be take up more time. That you, wouldn't. That's a good way to go about it. Like you play the game. How many steps can I take while still technically moving forward before, oh, before I circle this bitch? The day you snap in prison and you're like, I just need to make up the most dumb games to get through the day, probably the best day in prison, right? I would guess that's like the third day in prison, and then you snap, and once you snap after game mode and you just sit there and stare blankly at a wall. Like, how many times can I hop on just my right leg? Yeah. That's snap day in prison. Count the tiles. Definitely count the tiles right away. Oh, I think that's like day one. Yeah. That's gotta, like the the fake board, because that's if you somehow get like exonerated in the first like eight hours, like you still need to tell your prison story and you got to be like, yeah, eighty four tiles. Like if you miss that, and they're like, yeah, I actually got sent to prison, but I was only I was there for a little bit. And they're like, oh, tell us about it. And it's like, oh well, small room. Kind of damp and gloomy. They're like, okay, guy, you didn't go to prison. How many tiles were there? Everyone yeah. knows how many tiles there were. Yeah. If you went to prison, you counted the tiles. I don't know how many prison cells have tiles. It's tough. You could count anything, really. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can count the seconds. How does this story end? Okay. Uh, Lion said that the other innocent men... Lion said that other innocent men were also in jail charged with the same crime. Apparently, the two outside watchmen who worked that night with their dogs were locked up, too. Well, yeah, lock up everyone. Why not? Well, the outside watchmen kind of blew their own. <laughs> I don't think they deserve jail, but maybe like right. just 
you can't be a watchman anymore. Send them back to the homeless shelter from which you hired them. Right. <laughs> hey, you, sir, you and your dog, watch this yeah. bank. Okay. Yeah. Done. Davis, uh, so uh, let's see. Bail was eventually lowered to 2000 after Isaac Davis confessed, and then a grand jury cleared line in early 1799. Davis fled Philadelphia after returning all but 2,000 of the missing loot. So Isaac Davis confessed, returned the money, didn't return two grand, which we just found out was like 60 grand at the time. So, Right, but again, that's a convoluted 60 grand because I think, again, 60 grand would be like, quote unquote, middle class, which didn't exist then. It's a good amount of money for Isaac Davis, who was a stranger watching a shop who robbed a bank to just walk away with. Oh, yeah. So Patrick Lyon and reached out to Isaac you Davis. Ha- he had to pull that move. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, here's here's all the money. I'll be on my way. Yeah, you got to save some. And then if they're like, well, you're 2000 short, then you're like, oh, well, let me check. Oh, yep, back pocket. That's my bad. Thought I emptied all my pockets. Yeah. Or like, but, oh, I must have dropped it. I was carrying a lot of bills at once. Must have yeah, fallen out. Yeah, this was a lot of money, man. Um, so Patrick Lyon reached out to Isaac Davis and was like, dude, let them know I had nothing to do with this plan. Right. So, so Isaac Davis wrote a letter declaring that he was innocent. He was like, he had nothing to do with it. Wow. Would you do that if you're Isaac Davis or would you just be like, nah, man, I don't fucking care about you. I'd like to think I'd do that. You're if not, he wasn't would you be like, you're not innocent. You let a stranger into your building while you were changing the locks of the bank vault and you let me watch. Well, no, that was the that was the other guy. That was Robinson. They're all three of them were in the same room. Right. Yeah. He's just the locksmith. Yeah. Um, That's what he they wants got, the best think. lawyers in the world were fighting both sides of this. About two dozen witnesses were called. It was up to Lynn's legal team to prove that the bank and officials acted with malice. Um, some key testimo- testimony focused on Cashier Smith's vow to keep lying in jail even after Davis confessed because he just thought that there's no way he wasn't part of this. Right. Um, Let's see. Let me skip a little bit. The jury deliberated for four hours and returned with a whopping 12 grand verdict in favor of Lyon. Right. So now he's winning 12 grand. Basically robbed the bank. His plan worked out perfectly. He's in yellow fever prison for a couple months. He knew it, man. That seems like a tough part of the plan. George Clooney got beat up by that biker guy. R- right. And the other guy in Inside he wasn't, Man he, he lived wasn't in the back supposed of that to. room for a day. He wasn't supposed to. He's, he tells him. He's like, oh, you're not supposed to hit me right now. Yeah. Uh, would you spend three months in prison for 12 grand of that when you're a blacksmith? Like back then, maybe. Maybe. Four by 12 is pretty small. Um, so then they had to appeal it because the defendants appealed and were like, that's crazy. Finally, they settled and he walked away with nine grand, which in 1913, that's the inflation car- calculator I'm using. So it's still a hundred years, like right. still a hundred more years in 1913, nine grand was 300 grand. So in, in, in 1800, I don't know much more. Probably looking Much at more. like half a million dollars. Yeah. It was a large sum, equal to several years years wages for a working man. Uh, Lyon lived out his days in financial comfort. Some people say he went on to manufacture stuff, more fire engines, it says. Sure. But there is something cool. He had his portrait painted by John Neagle, who was a famous portrait artist right uh and this for historians sake is cool because he had his portrait painted in his blacksmith shop in his blacksmith gear working as a blacksmith it's called pat lyon at the forge and this is really rare because all the other portraits from that time were really rich people who didn't actually work blue collar jobs they because no blue collar worker had the money to have themselves painted. And if they right. did, they wanted to act high society. So it's kind of like the best look at a blacksmith you can, and only in a painting that we have. So go look that up, Pat Lyon 
and he walked away rich, man. Isaac Davis walked away kind of rich too. And two apprentices died. Robinson's fine. No one really lost in this bank robbery. The bank got their money back. Two lawyers made a lot of good money. Probably more than two lawyers. $11,000 was lost in the end. Of the bank's money, question mark? Yeah, and it went, and Isaac Davis has it. Had it. He walked away with it. Well, Isaac got two. The other guy got nine. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. The bank Who's... lost, but I mean, they got got for two hundred and fifty grand, and in the end, they gave away eleven. Right. That's the Ocean's Eleven scene. You know, you can you can lose eighty million in private tonight, or you can lose one hundred forty million publicly, or whatever it is. Yeah. I don't know. It's see, there's some funny business here, Jim. I think I think Patty Lyons. I don't think he was as innocent as he wants us to think with his stupidly titled book. Yeah. I mean, I'm you you went through a a deep dive of it, but yeah, I'm in I'm already in Hollywood mode. Movie fight? Yeah. They ought to make a movie out of that one. Let's make a movie. If you movie fight, all right, there's two ways you got to go. Is Pat Lyons the mastermind? Or he, so this is usual suspects, actually. You present him as the right. innocent, like, woe is me, I was innocent. And then at the last second, the twist is that he was the mastermind. You do all the flashbacks that have all the clues to lead you that he put every step of this in motion. From turning himself in, spending the time in prison, having Isaac Davis write the letter to him. Yeah, so I have... Okay, so Pat Lyons. Who's the original fall guy? Isaac Davis. Isaac Davis. Yeah, in my movie, they turn out to be the masterminds, obviously. They walk away with money. Mm -hmm. But things did go awry. Like, the, the original guy that died, the apprentice that died, he was in on it. Yeah, of Maybe course. Pat, Pat might have killed him. Oh, yeah, for sure. Not yellow fever. Um, Robinson, that's an interesting one. Maybe these two guys ended up screwing Robinson out of it, like he was in on it. I, I still don't have that dynamic down. Yeah, and I think it's... I think you if you do this in a movie, you play... Like, Lion starts off innocent, you think he's guilty, then he comes off full innocent, and then at the end, there's, like, a page in his book. He has, like, the book is, like, just this mad book that people like to gossip about, mm -hmm. first robbery, this guy was innocent, whatever. But there's, like, one line in there that one of the lawyers finds that's, like, wait, how could he know that this happened then? Yeah. And so, and then it's Pat Lyons kind of sailing off into the sunset and that lawyer looking at him like, I know, I know you were involved. Oh, okay. Yeah. I will, I will spend the rest of my time. So, yeah. Something like that. Or, or maybe there is an appreciation factor. Like, dude, you were willing to go to yellow fever prison for three months to get 9,000 bucks. Good for you. I'll get you next time. Yeah, it's one of those. It's like a, there's a there's a moment of mutual respect. Yeah. You think he sent any of the money back to his family in London? No. No way. So I have this for you. In his portrait, he put like the bank tower in the back left corner. You can see it like out a window of the shop. Oh, had to. He did yeah. it, man. He yeah, was he, was, he was involved. Yeah. There's no way. That is the biggest, like, homage to, and he's got this smug look on his face. Want me to send him, it to you real quick? Him, him and the fall guy started out as not the masterminds and ended up being the masterminds. Yeah, I mean, once, once Pat, okay, say he didn't do it, right? He's not the mastermind. I just sent you the picture of him. Sure. Check that out. Say he didn't do it. He's not the mastermind. Once he turned himself in 
and it went south. From that point on, he became the mastermind. Like, okay, I am going to work this to my benefit, no doubt. Yeah, man. You looking at the picture of him? I'm looking at the picture. We're sure that's the bank? Yeah. Then, I mean, yes, he robbed the bank. Yeah, look at that look in his eye. Yeah, pretty smug. Pretty <laughs> smug. I mean, he was like the richest blacksmith in the history Ever. of America as well. So. Yeah. Which begs the question, why are you still a blacksmith? All right. Philly got got. That is the end of the first U.S. bank robbery, and it's kind of interesting that there was really no consequences. And the the Isaac Davis got in trouble because he deposited the money back into the very bank he robbed. What an absolute idiot. So that's no, that. No, he didn't get in trouble. Was that as interesting as you wanted the first U.S. bank robbery to be, or is it not as interesting? It was interesting. I mean, it just... Yeah, how I just in my head, like you said, everybody loves a bank robbery. Mm -hmm. This is numero uno in the U.S. And if you and me could piece together a pretty good movie out of this, like how why hasn't this happened? That's a good point. You why know what I'm saying? I mean, the the book is there. Like that's I guess that's kind of the biggest problem in my head right now. I can't tell if you and me are geniuses stumbling upon something or if we've missed something. I don't know. I think we're geniuses. I think, I don't think we're geniuses, but I think what we are saying is correct. It doesn't take a genius to figure out Patty Lyons was in charge of this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the, that's the wrap for this episode of laughs from the past. Next week, we either have the story of the world's largest diamond, which is a good one, or uh, a governor and a volcano that killed everyone. Which are you more interested, Jake? I'll let you choose right now. You'll it's a volcano that kills everyone, or what's the other one? World's largest diamond. Ooh, two good ones again. Finding um, it and where it how where it where it went to, what they did with it, or a governor and a volcano that plotted together to kill everyone. I think it's shocking myself a little bit, but I think diamond. All right, well, all right next week we'll talk about the world's largest diamond. Jake, you'll probably forget that we chose that by next week, oh, which yeah. is great. No and, idea. And then after that, we got a lot of good stories. I uh, did some research recently, pulled up a, a ton. So I'm excited. Last from the past. Thank you very much. If you're listening and enjoying, please rate, review, subscribe, buy a cool shirt, or at least just tweet and say, hey, listen to the show. That was pretty interesting. Okay, how about this, Jake? Let us know if you guys think Patty Lyons, innocent bystander, or evil mastermind. Yeah, that's tough. We we put in a lot of evil at the end there. Tough to get an unbiased vote there. But very tough to get an unbiased vote. Know. Maybe there's a lot of his relatives listening that are just gonna like hammer home like my great 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 father was innocent, you bastards. Yeah. He went to he went to prison for three months. Yeah. Been there. Been, no, I haven't. Been, All right. Been got See you paid. guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.